Good morning, guys. It's been a little while since I did the last video, but the important thing is I'm here, and I'm back to make another one. Uh, as you can see, we are, I would say, past spring. We're more like into early summer, um, and there's foliage all around us. I woke up this morning at 5, and uh, the forest, I think, takes about an hour or so to kind of like it to wake up. I'm waiting for a lot of the light to kind of peek through, but taking advantage of this for just the scouting spots. So in today's video, we're gonna do some forest or woodland photography. Um, what I would like to do is explore a area near me. It's not, it's not even a, a crazy far place. It's an urban park, um, but it's one that I've used many times to like cycle through. I've birded a little bit in here, but I've never actually done any sort of like landscape photography. So that's the kind of the goal for the day. I really have no idea what I'm gonna come up with, um, but as you can sort of see, the sun is sort of peeking out. We've got these beautiful rays of light coming through the canopy um, that I think I might actually set the tripod up uh, and get some images of, because that could be really cool. Um, just trying to see everything around me in a little bit of a different light um, and just trying a new form of photography. So I'm enjoying the the fact that you guys are enjoying the videos. So with that, let's just get into it. So while setting up the shot, um, the light of the ray of, of light disappeared. Um, now I was able to, oh, it might be coming back. Um, I was able to grab a shot on the camera before I set you guys up. Um, just waiting for I think maybe have to do with cloud cover because it came in it was pretty intense and it disappeared for a little bit um, but let's just show you the back of the camera of what I've got here so as you can see uh, as you saw in that image, it really wasn't all that intense. Um, like I, I saw with my eyes when I kind of first showed it off when I had the camera, the, the kind of vlogging. Um, so now I'm going to have to try to find a different location, different composition where more rays of light are actually sticking through. So let's go find some. So it actually looks like there's a huge cloud. I can't really see if you can the canopy cover, but I can definitely see golden sun like elsewhere, like bouncing on the clouds. So I don't know if you can see that all that well, but the, the sun is definitely going to come back. So um, because there is a good amount of mosquitoes here, and I did bring repellent, but you know, there's still quite a bit of mosquitoes. I'm just going to walk around and see what I can find for myself. Um, and then hopefully I can set something up and then the sun can come back. But uh, I haven't been in these these woods these this early um, ever before, and it's kind of nice. You just hear all the the birds waking up, you know, the animals doing their things. There's squirrel and skunk and all kinds of other stuff. We have lots of um, groundhogs here too, and I have seen fox in this fo this woods just just once, and it was a. Uh, just by like a bit of an accident. I was just uh, walking through and out came Mr. Fox one morning. Uh, it's really cool. There we go. Ooh, this could, this could be interesting. This could be interesting. Uh, let's flip you around for this. So this is the, the scene I have just been greeted with. Now it looks much better than what you see right now, guys. Um, I guess the, 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 the my camera, the iPhone I'm shooting on, just can't handle the dynamic range of the lights, the light coming in from the sun. It's kind of making everything flat looking, but trust me, there's a lot more shadow here and it's a little bit brighter there. So I'm gonna set the camera up and uh, see if the sun doesn't get more intense, which I think it is actually. So let's get at it. So one thing, that I need to work on is my wide angle, um, just seeing in a greater area. So my photography for most of it, for those who don't know, is just like wildlife and bird photography. 
So I'm so used to being 500, 600, or even a, I had an 800 at one time. So very, seeing very you know, precise, detailed spots. Uh, and something that I'm trying to work on more for this year, or just as myself as a photographer, is just seeing greater, greater scapes, seeing the, the details in the bigger picture. And that's something that I feel like not everybody has, and I definitely don't. Like I can see it with my eyes, I just don't know how to translate that into an image. So that's something that I wanted to practice more and more on. Um, and while I have the uh, this 18 to 55 on here, um, and it should do the trick, I still have a hard time uh, composing. So let's not waste let's not waste any time. And uh, if it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, I don't. I, I legitimately don't know. I mean, I have an idea. I have an idea, but um, I do watch a lot of YouTubers who are into the um, landscape photography, and I actually admire, and that's what's inspired me recently. It's kind of like, let me, let me try my hand at that. But, uh, I, yeah, this is just as a heads up that if you're wondering if you see, you know, if you see the images and you're like, well, those are not that great. I don't blame you. I, uh, I'm doing this because I love photography and I love to learn and explore and try new styles and yeah. So enough of my, enough of my yapping. Uh, let's just uh, show you the shot. I don't think this is going to be the greatest, but uh, I do see something else behind you guys with some uh, light ray coming in that does actually look a little bit more interesting. Actually, now that I said uh, we're going to switch the camera around, there's a massive raccoon, rac raccoon sorry, climbing up a tree. I didn't pay much attention to it before that was a squirrel, but... I'm not gonna even attempt to show you guys on the on the phone because I don't have a good enough zoom on this on this uh, on the iPhone 12 I have, Mini that I have. It's just gonna completely blur and it's in a really dark spot. So take my word for it. I'm pretty sure you've all seen raccoons. But Mister is going to bed. He's looking at me. All right, we'll get out of here. So this is the new scene that. And of course the light's going away, there's a big cloud. Okay, I think this is one of those shots where it's worth waiting for. So we're gonna wait a little bit and hopefully the sun gives us something good because as I was setting up the two cameras, as I was setting up the two cameras, it did look good. There was this whole beam of light that was like just coming down this, being casted down this trail. Um, and it looked very interesting and I, I really do want to capture that so and it looked good quickly as I set this up um, So we're gonna wait it out and I will resume you guys. Oh Oh, it's coming back. Oh, it's coming back. Okay. Okay. Okay There we go, that's what I want to see Okay, let's, let's fire this off before the light goes and I'm upset again. Uh, underexpose that a little bit. I'm a real big fan of actually the, the light and the, the shadows it's casting on the trail. So let's try let's try a slightly different focus. I'm also trying my different kind of focal length. Since I have such a small range anyways, might as well. Now too wide doesn't look too I feel like I feel like there's really only a sweet spot. What am I at? 35 mil is where it, where it works at. It looks like it's pretty good. I 
I think what I'm going to do is actually going to set you guys up or set us up and we're going to look a little further down. Um, I'm always so used as a wildlife photographer to like getting on the perspective of my subject. Um, but being this is the forest, I really have no idea where to place myself. Um, so that's what you're going to be noticing is this going to be a lot of trial and error with me for my, for my photography for this. I'm actually having an amazing blast of a time right now. But like I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. So, yeah. <laughs> Something I'm working on right now is this fern here. Uh, I don't actually know the name of fern. I should probably check it on iNaturalist, and uh, I'll show you the images with, you know, um, me with the name on it. Um, but for the time being, I'm really interested in this fern, uh, and there's a little bit more light on it just before I set <laughs> the camera up. But uh, I've taken a few shots, so I could show you those too but I'm kind of limited on terms of what I have for lenses. I have like 18-55, like I said, I also have a 16, but I am, I have been looking for an XF, a 55 to 200, which I've been told by many people is a very good lens. Um, and I think that's the way I'm gonna have to do my landscape or nature photography. I like to say more of a, I'm a nature photographer because I just am a broader photographer, anything outdoors. But it's just really hard for me to see in, 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 in the grand scheme of things, detail, no problem. I've been recently with my Canon shooting a lot of butterflies and, and plants and, and macro stuff. Well, entry of macro, I'm not gonna call it like, you know, high high magnification macro, but uh, enough that you can consider it macro. I digress. Uh, so this, it's just, it's just, it's just a little difficult. Um, so let me fire off another image. So one thing that this Fuji X-T1 um, seems to do on me all the time, and I don't think it's because of its age, just to do with it was made that way, is it always forgets my settings. As soon as you turn off the camera, any prior settings, like my timer, it forgets. It's kind of annoying, um, which is why I've been thinking about a XT3, XT4 recently. The new X-H2 doesn't totally interest me as of right now. I'm curious about the regular HX2 because um, that's supposed to be a more photography camera than it is a video camera like the X-H2S is. But enough about camera talk. I'm definitely thinking about a 55 to 200, and that's all important right now. And if you have any comments, any, any recommendations on both landscape photography, nature photography, Fuji gear, I'm new to the Fuji ecosystem for a couple of months now. Just drop your comments down below. I'd be more than happy to have a conversation with you guys about gear. I love gear. Don't we all? Wow. The sun is looking beautiful this morning. Okay, so I think, I think what I had in mind is not gonna happen anymore. The sun is, is quickly rising in the sky. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna move on. taken the same two three routes and I'm actually with the camera exploring and I have come across this place this section of woods I have never been to in all the years I've been to this area um, and it's full of ostrich fern and 
it's like your classic looking fern around. There's two, two squirrels having fun chasing each other. But uh, I see something here. Like, it's beautiful. I love the, the ferns. Um, I've been to BC a few times, and that's what fern, big ferns like ostrich ferns like this, uh, uh, you know, remind me of. I'm not exactly sure that you guys have ostrich ferns if you're watching from BC. I think so. I could be wrong. Um, but from first glance, this is what it looks like. Um, so I'm going to see if I can sort of set something up with this. I don't know if you can sort of see it on the camera. Uh, there's a big fallen tree here. Um, another one over there. There's like this trail. Nice, black, you know, mocky looking uh, rock over there. But lots of ostrich fern. So I'm going to see if I can maybe get a wide image of it. Maybe get some tighter images of it. But uh, I have put the, uh, the 16 mil on um, since I was shooting before I turned the camera on and some other stuff. So I'm going to see if I can do anything with it here. And if not, I have the other lenses in my pocket, swap it out. But I often find myself coming to just these places, like beautiful locations. And just like before I set the, you guys up, I just stayed here watching everything for like five minutes. And I was just like, this is beautiful. I can still hear the cars in the distance and I'm still within city limits. Like this is so cool to think that uh, we have this and as you can hear, it's teeming with life, teeming with life. Right, guys so I'm gonna wrap up uh, today's video it's uh, after it's almost nine o'clock um, and I kind of and the lights getting getting harsh uh, lots really spotty in the woods so instead of just kind of you know breaking my head over this I decided you know what I'm just gonna call it quits go home have breakfast uh, see if a girlfriend because um, she's just waking me up now and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video for this. I know it's a short one, um, but if you want to follow me um, on like any sort of my wildlife content, because I have two accounts now, uh, you can check me out. It will be wildlife uh, or very uh, landscape stuff. Uh, we'll be exploring and I will be posting up today's images there as well as on my website, which is willbephotos.ca, which I'll link all that stuff down below for you guys to see. Um, and don't forget to comment down below anything so comments for shooting with fuji what lenses i should look for um things because i think i am gonna stick with the fuji system uh for the time being because i am enjoying it uh oh that's a really close squirrel and i do think that uh wow so much stuff going on 
I've been to this park so many times, like I alluded to before, and uh, I've never had this kind of wildlife action near me. So anyways, uh, if you liked today's video, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with your friends, leave me a comment. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.